It's 4.25 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday, April 8, 2016. You're looking at a live shot of Falcon 9 at Space Launch Complex 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. My name is Kate Tice, and I am a process improvement engineer here at SpaceX, streaming to you live from our Mission Control Center located in Hawthorne, California. Welcome to the first SpaceX Dragon mission of 2016. Today's flight of the upgraded Falcon 9 rocket is launching from Space Launch Complex 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida, and it will be setting Dragon's course for the International Space Station. Under NASA's Commercial Resupply Services contract, this is the eighth SpaceX cargo mission to the ISS. Our capsule is filled with resupply articles and experiments for the ISS astronauts. Also aboard is BEAM, an inflatable module or habitat that will be tested out on the ISS. More on that later on, though. We have rocket shots galore for you. Stay tuned. Hello, and welcome to Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, where we are just 15 minutes away from sending the first Dragon mission of the year to the International Space Station. My name is Brian, and I'm an automation software engineer all the way across the coast at the headquarters in Hawthorne, California. I'm very excited to be out here for another live and remote launch on this east coast in Florida. Now just behind me is Space Launch Complex 40, or as Kate mentioned, Slick 40. This is the place where we have historically launched all Falcon 9s from. And you can see the one that we'll be launching today standing about 20 stories tall in the middle of that pad. Now just adjacent to that pad is pad 39A. That's where we'll continue to launch our family of Falcon rockets, including Falcon Heavy, which is our heavy lift launch vehicle. Now, a few miles south of me, Falcon and Dragon operators are currently conducting final checkouts on all subsystems to make sure that everything that will be exercised in space is exercised on the ground ahead of time to make sure that we fly the safest vehicle possible. Now, since it is the first Dragon mission, we'll focus on that for a moment for this year. Now, Dragon about 20 hours ago was powered up in the horizontal to configuration to accommodate what we call late load. This is the cargo that has an element of time sensitivity, biological payloads, samples of chemistry, things that require freezing, or some other ground environment to sustain as long as possible until we place them in the spacecraft. That procedure concluded around 10 to 15 hours ago, at which point the vehicle in the pressure section was buttoned up and we erected Dragon and Falcon vertically into the final configuration for launch that you see behind me. Once vertical in this configuration, Falcon and Dragon both conducted a myriad of checkouts, propulsion, guidance, navigation, and control structures to make sure that we are ready to fly. With excitement rising, we now turn it over to our first status report. Good afternoon, I'm John Federspiel, a lead mechanical design engineer here at SpaceX, and I am very excited to be back here to share today's launch with you. You know, I have some hardware on Dragon, and so do many of my teammates and coworkers, and I know we are all extremely excited to be back launching some very important science to the International Space Station. Now, for today's launch, we are operating two primary mission controls simultaneously. Our first is out at Cape Canaveral with our launch and landing control center, and that team there is focused mainly on making sure that Falcon 9 delivers Dragon to its intended orbit, as well as monitor our first stage's attempt at landing back on the drone ship. Our second mission control is right behind me here in Hawthorne, where we have operators stationed or on call from about a day and a half ago when we first loaded Dragon up with powered cargo, through launch, berthing, and eventually splashdown in the Pacific Ocean about a month from now. Well, I've been following their progress in today's countdown, and the good news right now is both Falcon and Dragon are working no issues at the moment and are go for today's launch. We've also been given the go-ahead from the Air Force's 45th Space Wing. They are standing by and ready to support today's mission. And lastly, as you can see in that screen there, it is a beautiful day in Florida. It's actually a lot, lot nicer there than it is in Southern California right now. Temperatures are in the mid-70s. Uh, winds are gusting up to 25 miles an hour, but as of this moment, we are predicting a less than 10% chance of violating today's launch window. So for now, it looks like weather should hold out for today's instantaneous launch window in just under 14 minutes. So with this coming up right now, we have go for, to, reca to recap, we are go for Falcon, Dragon, the range, and weather. So let's learn more about Dragon in today's mission with our Director of Mission Management, Jessica Jensen. Hi, I'm Jessica Jensen. I am the Director of Dragon Mission Management here at SpaceX. Behind me is Dragon Alley. This is where we manufacture and assemble the Dragon spacecraft here in-house. 
10 years ago, Dragon was literally just a design on pieces of paper. Fast forward four years from that, SpaceX became the first private company to ever send a spacecraft into orbit and safely return it back to Earth. This first mission was super important because it allowed us to ensure that we'd be able to safely berth with the International Space Station and then safely come home. This first Dragon orbited the Earth two times and then came back down into the Pacific Ocean on its parachutes, and now it's displayed here in the factory. During the next mission, SpaceX became the first private company to ever have a spacecraft rendezvous with the International Space Station. On this mission, we delivered cargo for the astronaut, science experiments, and we were also able to return resupplies home to Earth. Since then, Dragon has been back to the International Space Station six times. Before Dragon gets to orbit, there's a lot that has to happen. First, it starts off in the design and analysis phase, where engineers iterate and ensure that we have a good design moving forward. After that, we go into the manufacturing and integration phase. This is where pieces of Dragon are manufactured and then assembled right here on the factory floor. It is then transferred into the clean room. In the clean room, we do all the final processing to ensure that Dragon meets all the cleanliness requirements that are needed to go to the International Space Station. The next step is to test the entire Dragon spacecraft. This is where we ensure that everything from the computers on board to the thermal control system are working properly. At that point, we box Dragon up and we ship it on a truck down to the Cape. Today's mission is part of the cargo resupply services contract that we have with NASA. And NASA has extended that contract now through 2024. Not only has Dragon been designed to carry cargo, it is also being designed to carry astronauts to and from the space station. And under the Commercial Crew Program, which is a partnership between SpaceX and NASA, SpaceX will be carrying astronauts to the ISS starting in 2017. This is Tom Poderio. I'm a firmware engineer at the avionics department here at SpaceX. Now, as you just heard from Jessica, the Dragon spacecraft is our very own fully functional spaceship designed and built right here in Hawthorne, California. We use Dragon primarily to ferry supplies to and from the International Space Station under contract from NASA, which is exactly what today's mission is aiming to accomplish. Now, while several other nations and even a few other private companies have capsules that are capable of delivering supplies to the International Space Station, Dragon is currently the only spacecraft in the world capable of returning a significant amount of cargo back down to the surface of the Earth. Now, since the retirement of the Space Shuttle in 2010, NASA has relied on Dragon to bring experimental results and astronauts' medical samples back to the surface of the Earth for analysis. Now, keeping a space station running requires multiple resupply trips per year, and so far SpaceX has completed six flights for NASA, including two demonstration flights. If successful, today's mission will mark the 10th flight of the SpaceX Dragon. Now, this version of the Dragon is intended only to ferry cargo to and from the station. Uh, though astronauts can and do enter Dragon once it's birthed to the ISS on orbit, our Dragon today isn't yet equipped to carry humans from the ground to orbit. The next version, Dragon 2, is being built with human passengers from mind from the very beginning. Once Dragon 2 is operational next year, we'll be able to send up to seven astronauts for up to 7,000 pounds of cargo to low Earth orbit at one time. Now keep in mind, the only other spacecraft currently capable of transporting humans from the ground into orbit are the Russian Soyuz and the Chinese Shenzhou. So Dragon 2 will mark the United States return to human spaceflight. Now that's still a year or so away, so let's get back to the Dragon in today's mission. F9 is going to launch Dragon into low Earth orbit so it can catch up to the ISS as it, as it orbits around the Earth. And once safely in orbit, Dragon will fire its Draco thrusters to carefully maneuver close enough so the station can grab it with its robotic cannon arm. Astronauts aboard will, uh, will then enter the Dragon to unload all that cargo and science supplies. So let's go back to Jess and learn just a little bit more about what we're sending up today. Today's mission not only consists of cargo to resupply the space station, but it also consists of some really exciting experiments. The largest of them is the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, also referred to as BEAM. BEAM was built as a partnership between NASA and Bigelow Aerospace to test expandable habitat modules in the space environment. BEAM is carried up in Dragon on its way to the International Space Station. After it's locked in place, BEAM is actually deployed and inflated out to its full volume, which is going to be equivalent to 565 cubic feet or the size of a very small bedroom. BEAM is the first type of this expandable technology being flown in space, so they're starting out small. That way they can ensure it's going to be robust to the space environment. Then future expandable habitats will be built larger and larger to be able to accommodate more people and more experiments in space. In addition to BEAM, Dragon will be carrying over 3,500 pounds of pressurized cargo to the astronauts. In this cargo, there are things such as a spare oxygen tank for the ISS and a protein crystal growth experiment that's going to look at how these crystals grow in the microgravity environment. 
The last goodies to be loaded onto Dragon is called the late load cargo. These are all the time sensitive experiments that have to be loaded onto Dragon within 24 hours of launch. This is done out on the launch pad just prior to liftoff. Once this operation is complete, Dragon is closed up and the vehicle is ready for launch. But approximately two and a half minutes after launch, the first stage is going to shut down. At this point in time, the first stage breaks away from the rest of the vehicle and heads towards the drone ship for an attempted landing. Meanwhile, Dragon is still attached to the second stage where it burns for approximately seven more minutes. Once Dragon and the second stage have reached the Dragon insertion orbit, Dragon is then deployed from the vehicle. Once we get within the vicinity of the ISS, astronauts use the robotic arm to capture Dragon and then attach it to the ISS. And last but not least, the astronauts can now go up to Dragon, open the hatch and start unloading the cargo. As you can see, we are at about T minus seven and a half minutes until liftoff. Here at Mission Control, the crowd is growing behind me and we're super excited. Um, I love talking about science, so let's talk a little bit about the experiments that are on board our mission today. As you saw from Jess's video, uh, Beam, it, Beam is a module that gets sent up in a packed configuration that gets birthed to the ISS and then inflated. This is the first of its kind, so the validation efforts for this inflatable habitat will tell us if we can use this type of technology for larger modules in the future. For example, when we go to Mars, we can't take up a ton of space in the payload or carry super heavy things because this costs us more in fuel. An inflatable module like what Beam has uh, would be lightweight and condensed for travel, but upon arriving to the Red Planet, inflated, secured, and voila, a space habitat. Also going up in Dragon are materials that will support ongoing ISS experiments. There are more than 250 science and research investigations that will happen over the course of Expedition 47 and 48. The materials that we're delivering on this mission will aid numerous research investigations that help us understand what biomedical, uh, psychological, and medical challenges the human body experiences while in space, as well as how to reverse those effects. Now, this doesn't help just astronauts, though. Things like aging or muscle wasting or osteoporosis is accelerated in microgravity. So performing those studies, performing studies like that on those conditions in space actually helps us develop solutions and treatments for those of us back here on planet Earth. Something that I am stoked for personally as to what Dragon will be bringing is what Dragon will be bringing back down from the ISS in several weeks. As some of you may know, the one-year mission with an American astronaut and Russian cosmonaut concluded recently. Just as the mission name says, these two superstars remained on the ISS for a year performing collaborative investigations, about twice as long as a normal mission up there. They returned to Earth back on March 1st, and Dragon will be bringing down the results of their year-long work in a few weeks on May 10th. We are just inside the six-minute mark here in the countdown of the liftoff of the Falcon 9 to uh, deliver the Dragon spacecraft to the International Space Station. At the T-minus 10-minute mark, we began our engine chill. That's where you start seeing that white cloud of gaseous liquid oxygen at the base of the rocket, and we're flowing in those Merlin, we're flowing the liquid oxygen into those Merlin engines, getting ready for ignition at the T-minus zero mark, or just slightly before. You're seeing at the forward end of the rocket, some arms are opening up. This is because we're getting ready to retract our strong back. You'll see that moving away from the rocket in a few moments here. And as, right before that, we actually transitioned our vehicle to internal power, both Dragon and Falcon. Both those transitions worked well. Uh, both of them are still reporting nominal and go for today's mission. The range has also given us their final goes. Weather is, has held out. It's going to be a beautiful day for today's launch. Uh, those conditions are comparable to what we're seeing out at the recovery site. So if everything uh, continues to be uh, continues to hold out for the remaining four minutes of this count. We should be lifting off successfully and on our way to the space station in a few moments from now. If there is a hold coming up in the next uh, few minutes in the countdown, we do have another opportunity tomorrow, 23 minutes earlier at 4.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But for the moment, we are go. So let's take it back to Brian at the Cape for a little primer on the stage landing today, as well as now, watch today's liftoff let's of discuss, Dragon spacecraft. Let's discuss stage return for a moment. Where the first stage comes back and lands, be it at the landing zone or out of the drone ship in the ocean, is dictated by where the first stage was going. If we go very far downrange or at a high velocity, 
away from the landing zone. It's just like a car with a limited gas tank. If you go very far, you can't return all the way. Falcon's propellant tanks are limited in the same manner. So if we go super far away, sometimes we cannot return all the way back to the landing zone. So we drop off and we land the first stage shortly upon the drone ship. That's what we'll be doing today out on the drone ship. Of course, I still love you. Stationed in the Atlantic Ocean, just east of here. Now, this is the same drone ship that we've attempted the landings on previously. And of course, it still loves us. Every single landing attempt, we resurface the top so that we have something flat and reliable to land upon. Now with that in mind, it's important to remind that this is an experimental objective. If we crash on top of the surface of the drone ship or we lose the first stage in the ocean as historically has happened, in either case you lose the first stage, but in one of those cases you gain a wealth of data that is essential as we move forward to try to land these stages in an environment that poses no risk to human life or to infrastructural damage on the actual pad itself. So. With the secondary objective in our sights, we now return sights to our primary mission for today because before we can land... We're now going to be transitioning to the pad. We're going to be going silent here to let you listen to the final moments of Falcon 9 as we're about to to lift off Stage it's two just locks, about two up. minutes from the pad. T minus two minutes. Falcon 9's on internal power. Vehicles in self line. LD, verify, go for launch. LD, go for launch. Stage one, stage two, cryo helium secured for flight. CDC, verify Falcon 9 and Dragon are in startup. Falcon 9's in startup. Dragon is in startup. Stage 1, stage 2, pressing for flight. Minus 30. T minus 20. Falcon 9 secured. Flight pressures. T minus 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero. Stop. Back to the to towers. GC, move to section 10.59 to secure the pad. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Falcon 9 is on its way to delivering the Dragon spacecraft to the International Space course, Station for you, its eighth US. commercial resupply services mission. We are about to cross through max Q. It's maximum aerodynamic pressure. It's one of the highest stressed states on the rocket. The 
keep in mind you're looking at a 70 meter tall rocket it's about the equivalent of a 25 story building going to space and that exhaust plume it's about one and a half million pounds of thrust coming out the aft end of the first stage you just heard them say that the MVAC chill has begun that's where we've started to chill down our second stage engine getting ready for ignition right after separation. This first stage will continue to burn for about another 20 seconds, after which we will have main engine cutoff, or MECO. About three seconds after that, we will separate from our first stage, and then the second stage ignition will follow shortly thereafter. into an orbit so it can catch up with the International Space Station. Yeah. So the shot that you see on your screen there, that is the second stage engine glowing beautifully, a golden orange there as it propels Dragon to the International Space Station. You can even see the, the coast of Florida just down on the yeah. bottom over there, right beyond the Nazi. Yeah. So, one of my favorite shots. Now there's a lot coming up in just a little bit here. Uh, the cheering you're just hearing right now means the nose cone is separated successfully from the Dragon. This is the aerodynamic cover that sits on top of the Dragon yeah. to protect it from the wind as it launches. Uh, the higher up we get, the less we need it and it just becomes extra weight so we pop it off and we don't need it anymore. Exactly. So Dragon still has a long way to go, um, but what we're going to talk about right now is a little bit about the stage return. So you're actually going to be hearing the crowd cheering a little bit more. Yeah. Um, the, the first stage has a few different burn maneuvers to go through as it descends in the atmosphere through the atmosphere to get towards the drone ship. So the first burn is the boost back burn. That's just about to happen in a few minutes, in a few seconds here. The boost back burn is when the um, the rocket turns around and kills off all its horizontal velocity for enough just to make sure its trajectory lines up with where the drone ship is in the ocean. Exactly. And then the second burn that we'll be looking for is the re-entry burn. And that's exactly as it sounds. It's whenever we fire the engines to slow the rocket down enough so that it doesn't catch fire as it re-enters the atmosphere. So that you just probably heard boost back for stage just so that'll burn for just a few seconds, and we'll hear another call saying that the boost back burn is completed. Again, this is great news for the first stage landing. Um, the first stage doesn't have a heat shield like the Dragon, so it needs to slow down before it hits the atmosphere. Exactly. So the, the, uh, the fast uh, and hot atmospheric gases don't damage any of the engines, so we can reuse it. Yep, and then the last burn that you'll hear us talk about is the landing burn. And if you've joined us on our previous webcasts, you're probably familiar with we try to bring you footage, and so we hope to do that again live as everybody else sees it here as well. So stay tuned, a lot of fun stuff coming up. So far, this mission is proceeding completely nominally as of this moment. Second stage is continuing to power the Dragon spacecraft to an orbit of 300 kilometers by 260 kilometers. You're hearing everyone clap right now because the boost back the burn has just completed. Uh, that meant that the first stage is on its way back to the drone ship. Of course, I still love you. About 300 kilometers off the coast of the uh, of the uh, of the Cape of Florida, 300 kilometers off the coast of Florida. Uh, coming up, we're going to have an entry burn in about a minute or so, following by touchdown shortly after that, about two minutes. We're looking at touchdown around the 8 minute, 15 second mark. Keep in mind, that first stage was going 4,000 miles an hour or thereabouts. It was over 100 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. We had to negate all that velocity, bring it down into guided entry down on, of course, I still love you. It's a very challenging and difficult maneuver. It is an experimental mission for us, as always. But as of right now, everything is proceeding nominally with today's mission. Second stage continues to perform uh, uh, splendidly. 200,000 pounds of thrust, roughly. That's what you're seeing coming out of that engine nozzle right there with the red glowing uh, tip at the aft end there. Uh, so for this moment right now, 
uh, everything at Hawthorne and in Cape and in, in outer space certainly is proceeding uh, nominally, as we like to say at SpaceX. And so with that, let's check, take it back down to Mission Control with Tom and Kate for all the excitement. I'm going to keep my eyes on the nets over here in case and make sure everything continues to go well uh, for today's mission. So we're just about to go into the re-entry burn of the of the first stage. This is when the first stage slows itself down just before it hits the thick part of the atmosphere so it doesn't damage itself. Now, so, oh, <laughs> so once the uh, re-entry burn is complete, then we wait for the uh, landing burn, and you'll actually be able to see the landing burn as it comes down. To the our first stage to come back down and land on. Of course, I still love you, located in the Atlantic Ocean. And we do hope to bring you video. Uh, now, it, there's a chance it may cut out, but we're pretty confident we'll be able to get some good video of the landing today. Now, uh, just to reiterate, um, even if it's not a completely successful landing, every little bit of data counts. This is an exactly. experiment. It's not related to the main uh, objective of today's mission, which is to get the Dragon to the International Space Station. Absolutely. So the data is the most important part about landing these uh, the first stages back on the drone ship. So like we said before, if it ends in a beautiful ball of fire on our platform, that is okay. We're still going to learn a lot from it. So keep standing by here. We'll get you some video stage really, one, really soon. Um, sounds like stage one is going through its transonic phase through the atmosphere. It means it's heading right down towards that yeah. drone ship. Uh, this, we're on track for a, hopefully a great landing right now. Uh, let's go to JFED and get a status up here. 
So you just saw right there the first stage successfully touched down sailing on the drone ship right there. That is an amazing sight to see. Meanwhile, we are in a good orbit. Dragon is in a good orbit, getting ready for a deployment. Should have just happened. Hopefully we'll have some video footage for you in a few moments of uh, the Dragon separating from the second stage. Uh, but right now, keep your eye on that amazing shot of our of our first stage standing on the drone ship right now. Uh, solar rays for Dragon uh, successfully uh, deployed. A confirmation of that. Uh, solar rays should be uh, separating and deploying shortly thereafter, and we will have uh, the generating power in a few moments from there. Right now, it is extremely exciting. You can hear the, the cheering around here at SpaceX um, to see that footage of the drone ship with the first stage recovered. Uh, going forward, we are going to be securing that first stage on the drone ship, uh, doing some final checks and, and making sure that we are ready to bring that stage back to the port, uh, back in Florida. Uh, for now, uh, obviously, it looks like it's, it's in good shape. Uh, we, we cannot totally assess the condition of the vehicle until we have our engineers uh, at the site looking at the specifics of the data. Uh, on the left side of the screen right there, you're looking at a camera image of the inside of Dragon Solar Ray fairings. That's actually the back side of our solar rays. Uh, in a few moments, you should see those solar rays deploy. Uh, you'll see them unfold like, a, like an accordion from the solar ray fairings. Uh, so we'll take a bit of a moment here and pause and, and let you watch the solar ray deployment from Dragon as we begin our mission to the National Space Station. Uh, if you keep following with us in the future too, we will be berthing with Dragon in a few days. And there goes those solar rays I mentioned, the, the wires uh, coming up the back side of the solar ray panels as we're unfolding. Um, now solar rays on Dragon, those are very important for us to deploy. They recharge Dragon a bit like our phone batteries, uh, and they harvest the energy from the sun. Dragon has batteries on board, uh, kind of like an electric car, but for a two-day mission to the space station, we need those solar rays to keep ourselves charged and ready to go. When those completely unfold, you'll see them lock out. They will start pointing to the sun, and we will begin our on-orbit operations. We are right now basically chasing the International Space Station, trying to catch up to it, and if everything goes according to plan, we will catch up to the space station Sunday morning, uh, 4 a.m. Pacific time, and hopefully capturing with the Canada arm and berthing with the space station soon thereafter. But as of right now, we are on orbit, and we have a first stage back on the drone ship. In case if you're just joining us, we had a beautiful launch of the Falcon 9 rocket uh, taking Dragon to the International Space Space Station. The stages have separated. We have landed the first stage back on, of course I still love you, our autonomous spaceport drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, Dragon is on its way to the International Space Station. You can see the solar rays that have deployed just as John said. So the solar ray deploy is just one step in a long string of careful maneuvers that the Dragon is going to perform as it approaches the International Space Station over the next 48 hours. So we don't just cruise right in there. There's actually a lot of uh, complicated orbital mechanics maneuvers that we have to take in order to make sure that we're exactly where we want to be so we don't endanger the space station or its crew. Exactly. Given the microgravity environment for anybody out there that might be new to space and how it works, uh, basically for any force that you apply, it gets amplified more so than you would think if you picture uh, what it's like here on planet Earth. So we have to be very careful with how Dragon approaches the International Space Station so that it doesn't, ha it doesn't come in too hot, obviously for the safety of the crew on board as well as the ISS itself. So over the next 48 hours, please stay tuned with SpaceX. You'll hear uh, we'll be giving updates about all Dragon's uh, maneuvers as it gets closer and closer. Um, once it gets within uh, the approach sphere, the, the, um, uh, once it gets within docking berthing distance of the International Space Station, the space station will use its robotic cannon arm to grapple on. That's called capture. That means that the, we've successfully flown to the station, and it's now in the hands of the space station operators. And what they'll do is they'll use the arm to bring the spacecraft into a berthing port on the ISS. Now, berthing is a little bit different than docking. Exactly. So docking is actually whenever the capsule itself is the active um, active entity in terms of docking to the International Space Station. But berthing is when the space station masters the process. So this is, a, this is an important distinction here because our next Dragon 2 vehicle will be capable of active docking. But right now we have to the, we let the Canadarm grab and capture that Dragon 
pull it in and berth it to the International Space Station. Once we're successfully berthed on, then astronauts can enter and remove all those cargoes and start doing all that great science. Exactly. So like we said before, today we are taking up BEAM, an inflatable module uh, that will be living on the International Space Station for the next two years. We'll be testing this technology to see if this is something that we could use in the future. Uh, applications for this are boundless. It's really exciting. Possible space hotel, who knows? Uh, in addition to that, we have lots of materials uh, for science experiments that will be happening on the ISS as well. So, as you said, thank you, or as you saw, um, this has been a very exciting day here at SpaceX. Um, I can't even believe that shot of the first stage standing on top of the yeah. drone ship. Um, we're going to take it back to JFED for just one more status update. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you all for joining us today. We are excited to be on our way to delivering that important science back to the International Space Station. And of course, we are extremely happy to be recovering our second, our first stage back on the drone ship. It's great to be standing upright on that drone ship. Uh, remember, that is the bonus objective for us here, the primary mission being delivering Dragon to that space station with berthing Sunday morning. But for now, it is super glad. We are very happy that you could join with us for today and today's mission as well. Uh, if you want to follow along the, the updates of today's mission as well as our status of our drone ship, make sure you check us out at SpaceX.com, our Facebook, our social media pages with Twitter, Instagram. And if you want to join us up here and work and, and be part of the team, SpaceX.com slash careers. For now, remember, next time you're asking yourself, where are my dragons? Know that one of them is in space on its way to the International Space Station.